Thanks for joining us, viewers. And I'm your host, Sage, reporting for Alcom. In today's show, we're going to look at some of major corporations invested in crypto, delve a little into the launch of Ethereum 2.0, the newer, faster version of Ethereum, and glimpse at the new Visa crypto card. Set time release in September 2021. And in doing so, hopefully, pique your interests rather than scare you away from the new emerging internet currency. But first, let's take a look at the excitement surrounding the price movement of Bitcoin, which today surged at approximately 8%, reaching 37,000 US dollars, but still stuck in the range. And worth the mention is the virtual conference hosted by Kathy Wood's investment firm, ARK. Last week with a distinguished panel, including Elon Musk, Jack Dorsey and Kathy herself, with a discussion surrounding the Bitcoin bull perspective, as well as energy usage. Word on the street is there could be more regulations for crypto looming out of China. As the crackdown intensifies in China, the question is, how far will the regulators go? Is there a chance that even crypto ownership could be completely banned in China? This along with the competition from the new altcoins could be why some analysts predict a dip in the price movement of the most popular cryptocurrency to reach as low as 15,000 US dollars. However, the hardcore Bitcoin bulls are adamant the price will eventually reach more than 65,000 US dollars before the end of the year. Now, since the 2017 drop in the Bitcoin price and this year reaching all time highs, a three to four year bull cycle has been anticipate, anticipated to continue on to the end of this year, which means next year could see a bearish slump occur. And Bloomberg has reported some analysts have a very bullish outlook on Bitcoin, seeing the next 10 years bringing the opportunity for its price to exceed a million dollars and by the end of this year reaching a peak of anywhere between 70,000 to 250,000. So if you're looking to find Australian companies benefiting from investing in cryptocurrency, take a closer look at Fatfish Group Limited, Pendle Group and Ukami Limited. And with the right analysis and careful consideration of your own financial situation, further investigation could be worth your while. Well, Elon Musk, Jack Dorsey and Kathy Wood have been discussing the bull case for Bitcoin last week and for a currency that has a decentralized mantra and the volatility of its price being affected by a single tweet from its billionaire advocates. It was almost a joke that publicly listed companies would invest in Bitcoin as an asset. But as this Internet currency emerges into the mainstream, it's been viewed as a digital gold, even now being developed into payment solutions with stable coins and central banks' digital currencies, the veil and the taboo surrounding its acceptance is being lifted. It could be speculated that MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor let the damn waters loose, fueling interest in the elusive internet currency as an investment when the cloud software company bought $425 million of Bitcoin in late 2020. Making the news also, Tesla's CEO Elon Musk and Square's CEO Jack Dorsey also walked the same golden mile, buying large sums of Bitcoin through their companies. In times of high inflation, gold can be seen as a hedge and Bitcoin bulls have the same view that Bitcoin can do the same. The reason behind this is there is a finite amount of both, meaning they can't be reprinted by the government. So here's a snapshot of the top publicly listed companies with the most Bitcoin holdings. The analytics platform MicroStrategy is taking the lead, utilizing Bitcoin as a financial asset and continuing with this strategy through 2021. This has seen the company holding reserves of Bitcoin reaching the equivalent of $3.3 billion approximately. And Michael Saylor has been reported saying that he was buying about $1,000 in Bitcoin every second. However, Mr. Saylor didn't always feel this way about the internet currency and this investment strategy for his business is somewhat of a backflip from his initial musings towards the subject. Also being reported saying back in 2013 that Bitcoin's days were numbered. However, now he is settling for Bitcoin as a non-fiat reserve during an economic environment that is threatened by high inflation as an alternative to investing in the yellow metal safe haven gold. A cryptocurrency investment firm, Galaxy Digital Holding, whose founder, Michael Novogratz, also feels the same about using Bitcoin as a non-fiat reserve, believing that it has the capability to outperform gold. Yet his statements come with a warning to the retail investor that gold was a safer investment and he advises holding a lot less Bitcoin than gold due to the volatility of the price. 
And Galaxy Digital Holdings is a company whose operations are directly involved with cryptocurrencies. Founded in 2018, it has been partnered with Block.1 and BlockFi, two other blockchain enterprises. Galaxy is known to be the company with the largest holdings of Bitcoin within the crypto industry. And reportedly, its investments are worth just over $522 million. Jack Dorsey, Twitter's famous founder, also followed suit as the CEO of Square in October 2020, where it invested $50 million in Bitcoin. And along with Tesla's investment now, the flint is well and truly to the rock in the way of corporate investment into Bitcoin. And Square is a financial payments company and is continuing to invest in the crypto. Jack Dorsey, being a crypto enthusiast, has extended his commitment to developing the sector through a $5 million education fund for other crypto advocates. Square has Bitcoin investments as a firm strategy on their balance sheet and has been reported to own $255 million worth of the internet asset. And now that we've wet your lips with a slick of the corporate majors who have the largest Bitcoin holdings in the world, after the break, we'll look into insider selling of MicroStrategy stock because it's commonplace that we talk about buying of coin. It's important to also discuss who's selling stock of those prominent firms with a focus on the insiders. So please stay tuned for more Crypto Buzz right after this. Property by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Calkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Calkine. Thanks for joining us, viewers. This is Crypto Buzz by Calkine. I'm your host, Sage. And as promised, let's take a glance at the insiders with the largest holdings in micro strategy stock and what they are doing with it. It's usually of significance when insiders have holdings of their own stock. For example, MicroStrategy staff and stakeholders hold close to 1.1 billion worth of the company shares. For MicroStrategy, Mr. Carl Rickardson, the independent director, is reported to have made the largest insider sale of his portfolio in the last year. At the time of the sale, MicroStrategy's price was $800 and his total short trade was valued at $2.4 million. And for the retail investor, the fact that insiders own almost 20% of MicroStrategy could be somewhat of a positive indicator about the company's stock, leading to notions of incentives for management to take ownership in this manner. Although the last three months has not seen many of any insider trades, some are cautious about insider selling of stock due to its ability to affect the share price. Moving on now to what's evolving in the crypto world. Ethereum, the second largest crypto in market cap, knows how to move itself out of Bitcoin's shadow, also under the spotlight with some major changes due with the launch of Ethereum 2.0. This will now enable a network that is significantly faster, more cost effective and provide an ability to stake Ethereum, helping to ensure more security to the network. However, any eligible participants who choose to stake their tokens through Coinbase won't be able to unstake until the full launch of Ethereum 2.0, which is estimated for 2022 to 2024. Yeah. Ethereum's co-founder Vitalik Buterin notes the things that excite him are cryptography and blockchains, namely Ethereum, and the new government social tech, life extension, building better smart cities and online education for all, as well as space and the reduction of poverty. So apart from all that, he also has time to focus on the inefficiencies caused through the proof of work system of blockchain mining with a move towards proof of stake system instead where nodes that record transactions are chosen by algorithms leading to a less complex cryptography work required. So Ethereum miners can focus on the other things that matter most to them, such as the ones mentioned earlier. And the three-pronged release will also include sharding, where data verification is broken down into multiple nodes, solely responsible for verification of data, enabling the full blockchain network to make use of parallel processing, which will in turn also increase capacity. 
Ethereum is often used in the blockchain selling and recording of NFTs and is cited to be the choice of blockchain that Amazon may be utilizing in the development and release of a unique cryptocurrency. It's now time for another short break, but please stay tuned to Kalkine TV for more crypto buzz. Property by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Kalkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Kalkine. Welcome back viewers, Crypto Buzz here by Kalkine TV. And since you have garnered your valuable attention and we will reward you with more exciting news from the crypto sector. Whilst Bitcoin ATMs or electric vehicles may not be a usual part of your daily life yet, especially if you're in Australia, it may still sound like a scene from a sci-fi script. Buying and selling crypto is emerging into the mainstream in some of the largest economies of the world. Let's share a snapshot of some major corporations who are allowing crypto as a payment option to suit the fancies of those usually high net individuals unless you got back in 20 or 2008 and hung on tight who are embracing cryptocurrencies. So Pavilion Hotels and Resorts, who own a chain of hotels in Asia and Europe, AXA Insurance in Switzerland, Microsoft to enable access to their Xbox Live and Skype, and Starbucks through the new Backed app have all been reported to now accept Bitcoin payments. And more and more financial institutions are needing to develop their traditional payment solutions offered to be able to keep up with the modern innovations that are emerging through blockchain and fintech, and not to mention the world banks developing digital currencies. But credit cards are also slated to be adjusting to the new world of the internet currencies. Visa will introduce the first Australian crypto card, allowing users to spend Bitcoin using a physical card. And users will be able to pay using their crypto card at retail stores, as well as hospitality venues using the Crypto Spend app. The Crypto Spend app was developed by two mates who met at the University of Technology, Sydney, and the co-founders Andrew Grech and Richard Voice convinced Visa to issue the crypto card based on the belief that crypto holders would happily spend their digital currency on goods and services if they were allowed to do so. Their belief is spending crypto directly in a more convenient way rather than selling it. And this perspective runs counter to the country's central bank, the Reserve Bank of Australia, which are yet to embrace digital currency's potential, labelling it a poor store of value. Visa card, on the other hand, will allow its users to spend Ripple, Bitcoin, Cash and Ethereum's Ether and will be issued by ASX listed company Novati. The card is due for release in September. The boom in cryptocurrency over the last 12 months in particular makes crypto cards quite a handy prospect and one of the main benefits of having a crypto card is that the user can pay for goods and services without paying fees to convert the crypto into fiat. It was reported earlier this year that Amazon was joining the ranks of other tech giants including social media giant Facebook in laying the groundwork for its own exclusive cryptocurrency and that said the e-commerce company doesn't directly accept cryptos yet. But however, you can buy Amazon vouchers through crypto-only company BitRefill, a platform that makes living on cryptocurrencies easier by converting Bitcoin into gift cards, refill phones and so on. So 2021 has already seen a reported one billion US dollars in spending so far on Visa crypto cards. And Visa announced this last Wednesday as its first half yearly report. And although this may sound like a lot, it's only small fish when compared to the 11 trillion US dollars per year consumers spend with regular Visa cards. So thanks for joining us on our latest edition of Crypto Buzz. And I look forward to our next segment, Tuesday afternoons only on Calkine. Stay tuned though for more of the live market updates on the diverse themes and sectors that will keep you enthused and attuned to the trending economic news. This is Sage signing off.